Hey guys, today we're going to talk about writing equations that are parallel or perpendicular to a given equation and that pass through a specific point. In other words, if given an equation and given a point, can you write another equation based on the first one that will be parallel to it or that will be perpendicular to it? So in order to do that, first we need to talk about what is parallel, what is perpendicular, and we need to talk about reciprocals and, more importantly, negative reciprocals. Parallel lines are lines on the same plane that never intersect. In other words, Mr. Potato Head is never going to get from the top line to the bottom line because they're never going to meet. Parallel lines also happen to have the same slopes. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect at right angles. They form a 90 degree angle. They happen to have slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. These images are courtesy of the website below. Reciprocal is a number that when multiplied by the given number gives a product of 1. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 half because multiplying 2 times 1 half equals 1. On the other hand, the negative reciprocal is similar to this reciprocal, but instead of 1, it gives a product of negative 1. So the negative reciprocal of 2 is negative 1 half because 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. It's important to note that parallel lines have the same slope. They have different y-intercepts, but the same slope. For example, the equation y equals 3x plus 6 is going to give you a line that is parallel to y equals 3x minus 1. They have different y-intercept values, b values, of 6 and negative 1, but the same slope of 3. That's your m. This is only valid for non-vertical lines. Why? Because vertical lines will give you a slope that is undefined, and you can't relate them like this. Finally, you should know that two lines are perpendicular if their slopes are negative reciprocals or each other. So, for example, that first line, y equals 3x, it's perpendicular to y equals negative one-third x because the slopes 3 and negative one-third are negative reciprocals of each other. You multiply them, you're going to get a product of negative 1. A vertical line and a horizontal line are also always perpendicular. So let's get started. How do you write an equation for y equals 2x plus 3 that is parallel to it and passes the point 5, negative 3? Pretty simple. First thing you do is identify the slope. We all know that in y equals mx plus b, that's your slope, that's your y-intercept. To find a parallel equation, forget about the y-intercept. All you care about is the slope. So my slope is 2. Now, we don't need this at all for any reason. All we need is this point. I need to make sure that my new equation in the form of y equals mx plus b passes through this point. So I'm going to use my point slope form. y minus y1 equals m point slope times x minus x1. There's my x1, there's my y1, there's my m. So y minus negative 3 equals 2 times x minus 5. Clean it up. y plus 3 equals 2x, because 2 times x is 2x, minus 10, because 2 times 5 is 10. Keep cleaning. Well, I want the y by itself, so I have to get rid of that 3. I end up with y equals 2x minus 13. So now let's talk about perpendicular equations. Notice I went from my parallel symbol to my perpendicular symbol. That's like an upside down T. Some people add the little square I do, some don't. So this is also the symbol for perpendicular. Regardless, how do I write a perpendicular equation for y equals negative one-third x plus two that will go through the point four comma two? 
Step one. Now we need to find the negative reciprocal. So if my m is negative one third, I'm going to change the sign of my new m to a positive. Why? Because a positive times a negative will give me a negative. And for it to be the negative reciprocal, it has to give me a negative one when I multiply them. So now I'm going to ask myself, what do I multiply times negative one third to get to negative one, positive three? It's the inverse with the opposite signal, symbol, sorry. When we multiply negative one third times three, we end up with negative one. Again, it's the inverse, flip them, with a different symbol, opposite symbols. So this is my new slope. This is my old slope. This is my new slope. Now, I don't need this anymore. I'm going to use point slope again, because I have a point and I have a slope to find my equation in the form of y equals mx plus b. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. There's my x1, there's my y1, there's my m. Use your new m, not your old m. y minus 2, equals 3 times x minus 4. Clean it up. y minus 2 equals 3x, 3 times x, minus 12. 3 times 4 is 12, the negative symbol. Clean it up again, get rid of that 2. y equals 3x minus 10. This equation is perpendicular to this equation. Why? Because the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. If you multiply them, you're going to get negative 1. It also goes through the point 4, comma 2. Again, the original equation would not go through this point. The original equation is perpendicular to it. Get ready to take some notes. So let's look at some examples. Are these two equations parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Hint, look at the m value. y equals 4x plus 3 fourths compared to y equals negative one-fourth x plus four. This one has a slope of four. This one has a slope of negative one-fourth. If we multiply four times negative one-fourth, we end up with a value of negative one. Negative one means these two are negative reciprocals, which means these two equations are perpendicular to each other. Now let's look over here. M is two-thirds. M is two-thirds. So for the equation y equals two-thirds x plus six and the equation y equals two-thirds x minus six, they're parallel. Even though they have different y-intercept values, we can still relate them to each other because we know that the same slope means they're parallel. Let's look. Here's another example. Given the equation x equals 2 and y equals 9, or rather the points x equals 2, y equals 9, if we were to put these two lines on the coordinate plane, we'd end up with this vertical line and a horizontal line similar to that. We know that the slope here is undefined and the slope here is zero. We also know this is a vertical line and this is a horizontal line. Vertical and horizontal lines are always perpendicular. Here's one final example. Are they parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Notice both of them 
are in standard form. 3x minus 5y equals 3, and negative 5x plus 3y equals 8. They're both in standard form, which means the first step is to change them into slope-intercept form. Minus 3x, minus 3x, negative 5y equals negative 3x plus 3, divided by negative 5. Whoa! Girls, let mommy finish her lesson. Divided by negative 5, y equals 3 fifths x plus, I'm sorry, minus 3 fifths. On this side, we're going to look at it again, turn it from standard into slope-intercept form. So we go plus 5x, plus 5x here. We end up with 3y equals 5x plus 8. Got to get rid of the 3s. Divide them by 3. y equals 5 thirds x plus 8 thirds. We look at both of those slopes and compare them. Here, can you put your hand here? That's the first slope. And Josie, show them the second slope right there. These are the two slopes. Now, when we compare them and multiply them, 3 fifths times 5 thirds, we end up with, what do we end up with, girls? Wow. 1, that's right. So we end up with 1, which is not what we're hoping for. In order for them to be perpendicular, you should have ended up with a negative 1. So these are neither. Okay, so let's put it all together. Let's write an equation that is parallel to negative 3x plus 4y equals 8 and goes to the points for 1. We're going to do that on this side. And then we're going to use the same equation and the same point and instead write an equation that is perpendicular to this one and goes through this point. First thing to notice, this equation is in standard form. I've already taught you how to do this. You can go look at our, the beginning of the video. But basically, when we isolate the y, we turn it into slope-intercept form. So now we have it in slope-intercept form y equals 3 fourths x plus 2. We isolated the y, went from standard to slope intercept. Now, to make one that is parallel, we find the m, which is 3 fourths, use the same m, and then put it into slope, I'm sorry, put it into point slope form with these coordinate points. So we end up with y minus 1, because the 1 is our y1 value, equals 3 fourths, that's our slope m, times x minus 4. Clean it up, y minus 1 equals 3 fourths x minus 3. Get rid of that minus 1 by adding 1. y equals 3 fourths x minus 2. This equation is parallel to this equation. However, this one goes through this point. This one will never go through this point. If we wanted, instead of ending up with a parallel equation, we wanted to end up with a perpendicular equation, again, turn it into slope-intercept form, and look at the slope. Our slope is originally old slope, 3 fourths, but we need the negative inverse, or negative reciprocal. So we do the inverse, flip it, instead of 3 fourths, 4 thirds, and instead of positive 3 fourths, negative four-thirds. Flip the symbol as well. Why? Because we want the negative inverse. If we multiply these two together, we'll end up with negative one. Then we put it into our slope point slope form. y minus one equals, use your new slope, negative four-thirds times x minus four. Clean that up. y minus one equals negative four-thirds x plus, negative and negative gives us a plus, plus 16 thirds, get rid of that negative 1, add it on both sides, y equals 4 thirds x plus 19 thirds. This equation down here is perpendicular to our start equation, but this one will go through the point 4, 1. This one would never go through the point 4, 1. You guys are done. Make sure you got all your notes.